The only reason Lydia went back to the theme park was solely because she felt guilty about setting Beetlejuice loose on them. What other reason could there be? It couldn't have been because it was the coolest thing to happen to her since the last time she saw the poltergeist, right? The thrill of the unexpected and the dangerous certainly had no sway over her whatsoever. It's not like she wanted to see him anyway. She was just making sure he wasn't terrorizing 15-year-old girls into marrying him. She needed her conscience cleared, that's all. The incantation worked, and now that she knew what to prepare for, she hadn't been phased at all by the eerie sights. She marched with purpose no one noticing her, just like last time. She checked the game's area first, and was not disappointed. Hey, Dietz! A gruff and incensed voice called out to her. Lydia whirled around, scanning the vicinity. Over here, shortstop! Her eyes zeroed in on none other than Beetlejuice, trapped in a glass box with a deep scowl on his face. He was trapped. Again. Lydia threw her head back and cackled. Oh, yeah. He drawled. Very funny. Hilarious. He pointed an angry finger at her. This is your fault. Get me the hell out of here. Lydia flashed the poltergeist a devilish grin before looking down and pretending to examine her nails. Nah, I don't think I should. After all, why would the ghost with the most ever need help from little old me? The scowl on Beetlejuice's face grew deeper, then settled into an expression of contrition she'd only seen on lovers caught cheating on a spouse. <laughs> Look, we both said some things we didn't mean his eyes flickering to his feet for a moment. Was thinking I'd forgive you for ditching me if you got me out of this fish tank. For a moment, Lydia could have sworn she saw something ripple across the water's surface, but she quickly dismissed it. She was too busy trying to figure out how that statement made any sort of sense. You're kidding me. Beetlejuice just beamed at her. Glad you realize your part in this, Deets. So, since I'm a ghost of his word, how's about you go and do that thing you do and get me out of here so we can talk, huh? In response, Lydia shot him a furious glare and stormed over to the ghoul attending the booth, causing the creature to yelp with surprise when the balls he was holding were yanked out of his hand. Even though she knew full well that she'd never been anything remotely close to talented when it came to sports, she still gritted her teeth and launched the object at the target with all the strength she could muster. The ball sailed through the air and hit the side of the tank, causing the murky water to slosh. Beetlejuice let out a yelp, then narrowed his eyes. Come on, stop playing around, he growled, his piercing blue eyes trained on her face. Ain't funny, kid. The ghoulish attendant stared at the ball rolling on the ground in shock, then craned his obviously broken neck toward the crowd, no doubt trying to discover the source of the theft. Lydia held her breath, but as usual, no one seemed to notice her. Instead, the attendant scuttered behind the booth, scrambling to pick up the ball. Hey! Beetlejuice roared, his voice rising in pitch as Lydia wound up for her second throw. Stop screwing around and get me out of here! To her surprise, a small crowd had gathered behind her, watching with what appeared to be interest as the ghoul struggled in the tank. A tiny boy and who seemed to be his mom moved next to Lydia, almost instinctively staying just far enough away so they didn't touch her. Mama? The tiny voice called out, tugging on the interesting-looking dress. Is that guy gonna get eaten? The mother smiled, and since her face consisted of nothing but a mouth, the gesture was slightly unnerving. Depends on what lurks below, dear. Perhaps we should play around and find out. How about you don't? Beetlejuice screamed, his eyes now wide with terror. I don't know what's down there, but I ain't willing to find out. Lydia stuck out her tongue and tossed another ball at the target, grumbling when she missed again. This time, the ball grazed the side of the target and she could swear that the water level in the tank started to rise. Deets! He cried warningly as she wound up like a star pitcher might at the world championship. Deets! His cry sounded less threatening by the second, and Lydia smirked. All she had to do was will it so, she thought, as she closed her eyes and concentrated on her gut instinct. No! He shrieked. Her arm was weightless as she hurled the ball through the air with a zip. The thud of the ball hitting its target was reminiscent of the hammer breaking the chain the evening prior. A shock wave went through the air that blew through the strands of her hair like a gust front. All went silent. Beetlejuice, wide-eyed and frozen in mid-flail, braced himself for the inevitable drop. But nothing. Nothing happened. The poltergeist sighed with relief at the same time the audience mumbled their disappointment of the anticlimactic ending. <laughs> 
the poltergeist exclaimed with a grin and shimmy in his seat. Nice try, Tuts. He cackled maniacally while he held his belly and pointed at her. <laughs> Better luck next time, yeah. Tentacles. They were definitely tentacles. Shot out of the water so fast that if Lydia had blinked, she'd have missed the whole horror show. Beetlejuice had been wrapped up like a corn dog before Lydia could gasp in terror. Well, <sighs> Beetlejuice deadpanned. I've seen enough hentai to know how this goes. With a splash, he was gone. Thank you for listening. You can find the written version of this story by clicking the link in the description. Please like and subscribe for more. And let me know what you think of this story.